Yeah. I got about a half hour before they uh, closed the, the cafeteria. I tried to run my phone to zero uh, percent so as to reset the battery. Yeah. But the Supreme Court rulings were very interesting about these uh, summary judgments. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, containing the... Oh. <laughs> um, let's say you get convicted of a Matthew Shepard hate crime of making up crimes where I wasn't in swim, I wasn't in Brennan, and I'm not crazy. Poop. Now you take me off the dock, you put me back on the dock, and you cancel the court hearings, and you're waiting for me to fail to appear. Yes. But we had a cell hearing that we got scheduled for the 4th, and I made sure that it was the cell hearing. Yeah. And you're going to have me admitted to a mental institution where you're going to administer psychotropic medication against my will for a crime where you have the evidence that I wasn't a participant in it. Now, um, this uh, in a per curiam ruling two weeks after Tom Blee, yeah, the entire United States Supreme Court quoted Tom Blee uh, to reiterate the liberal uh, notion of uh, something standard still governs. And, uh, federal rules of civil procedure require only a short and plain statement of the claim showing mm -hmm, that the pleader is entitled to relief. Yeah. Now, uh, specific facts are not necessary. I don't have to tell you that I'm suing you in every county of every state of the United States. <laughs> Those are specific facts. Yes, yes, yes. The statement need only give the defendant, known as each and every sheriff's department, fair notice uh -huh, of what the claim is and the grounds upon which it rests. Yes. Now, let's say I'm suing every sheriff, <laughs> every police officer, <clears throat> all the FBI agents. Yes. Every oath of office, mm -hmm. all the attorney oaths and the attorney oaths of admission, mm -hmm. then each and every one of those judges, uh -huh. justices, coach, court commissioners, yes, prosecuting attorneys, mm -hmm. public defenders, mandatory reporters, and all those that have a legal or professional liability mm -hmm. for the enforcement of child abduction, exploitation, kidnapping laws. <laughs> as well as the hate crime for being prejudicial against myself as a father. Now, Justice Clarence Thomas, mm -hmm. if you remember, he's an African-American. Yeah. In an employment dis uh, discrimination matter, now, this applies to each and every one of these lawsuits, yeah. not just employment. <laughs> Respondent argues that allowing lawsuits based on conclusionary allegations of discrimination to go forward will burden the courts and encourage disgruntled employees to bring <laughs> unsubstantiated suits. Whatever the practical merits of this argument, yeah. The federal rules do not contain a heightened pleading standard for employment discrimination suits. <laughs> a requirement of greater specificity for particular claims is a result of is a result that must be obtained by the process of amending the federal rules and not by judicial interpretation. <laughs> now, it seemed to me that uh, Judge Porter was using judicial interpretation. He interpreted the violating of a protection order as in you didn't have to have any evidence and you didn't have to be in the city where you have allegedly violated it. <laughs> Brent Bayson interpret the judicial interpretation that it does not require the petitioner yes, to have to appear in court. Yeah. You don't have to give notice an opportunity to be heard. Yes. And you can use forgery and misrepresentation to issue protection orders. <laughs> There's a judicial interpretation of jurisdiction. True. You don't have to be a resident of the state of Washington when the respondent is a resident of the territory of Guam. Yeah. You don't have to be a resident of the state of Washington when the petitioner is a resident of the territory of Guam. In fact, you can name the minors named any time you want without them having any civil rights enforced. <laughs> now, I thought this was a nice little synopsis. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which extended only to other federal claims filed in federal court uh, did not purport to overrule or even to address the United States Supreme Court's unanimous decision. Eric Swedberg, notably Judge uh, Richard Posner. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I'm thinking we're going to have summary judgments. Yeah, I'm just going to be a brief statement as in, you're going to give me everything you own, and you're going to go to prison for 10 years for being an accessory to the Matthew Shepard hate crime of having me to go to court without any evidence and without any actual jurisdiction. <coughs> And then it's a brief statement. That's all that's necessary. Yes. They call these summary judgments. Now, when it says that I'm going to sue you for every asset that you currently own. Yes. And then all the available uh, punitive damages. Yes. Mm -hmm. So to teach you a lesson. When you get out of prison, everything that you earn above and beyond 50% of your actual earnings will belong to myself. <laughs> Plaintiffs represent a putative class of at least 90% of them. You know, I'm enormous discovery costs. And it's so much easier just doing these uh, these very simplified, it's just a, it's a, it's a little statement. Specific facts are not necessary. Uh huh. Uh, requires only a short and plain statement, as in, I'm going to take all your assets, you're going to go to prison, and when you get out of prison, you're going to pay me for the rest of your life. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.